Welcome to my unboxing of the ASUS Transformer Pad Infinity TF700. It's available in a couple different colors, including a sort of a dark purple whiny color, and then more of like a champagne yellowy color. This is very similar to the Transformer Prime that we saw a number of months ago, and bears very little resemblance at all actually to the original Transformer other than the fact that it does support the additional dock accessory which gives you extra battery life as well as a full keyboard. Turns it more into like a, a netbook -y type thing as opposed to a tablet which is great because it's got tablet kind of battery life with like 15 hours of battery life if you add the additional dock. So there's your warranty information as well as your user's manual which is pretty straightforward. You can pretty much find all the information you need about using Android on the interwebs, so you shouldn't have to worry too much about a user's manual. Included accessories are pretty sparse, so you've got an ASUS wall board as well as a charging cable, so it still uses the same dot connector as the original transformer did, just like that. So that's where your data and your power are going to come from. And it includes actually an exceptional um, microfiber cloth. We have a couple of these in the Tech Tip Studio. They actually work really well. I'm going to go ahead and yoink that. All right, moving right along. So what is special about the Transformer Pad Infinity? I think I actually charged this already, so it should be working and should be pretty much ready to go. Couple things. Number one is the display. So it's, oh, hold on, give me two seconds, guys. So the big improvement is the display. The Transformer Infinity uses a 1920 by 1200, that is, full HD plus a little bit because it's 16 by 10 display that gives you almost the same pixel density as the iPad 3, although not quite. It also uses a, an unprecedentedly fast Tegra 3 processor. The quad-core processor in here runs at 1.6 gigahertz in quad-core mode and 1.7 gigahertz potentially in boost mode. This doesn't necessarily increase the GPU speed, but the extra CPU speed and the fact that it's using one gig of DDR3 memory at 1600 megahertz means even with ice cream sandwich, it feels extremely snappy when you're browsing and it is very, very, very fast, very responsive. And actually, yeah, that's really nice. This is my first time actually using the device, so just outstanding. So let's go back to home. Uh, a few more things. So this is really cool. Uh, they've got an IPS plus mode for the panel, so you can either take it right down to super, super dark. You can have sort of a... Oops, pay attention. You can have sort of a happy medium. You can crank it or... There we go. You can crank it even more. So IPS plus mode is for outdoor readability. So if you're sitting next to a window, if you're outside, IPS plus mode is going to give you the contrast and the brightness that you need in order to not have any difficulty reading text or watching your movie or doing whatever else that you're doing. Now, this one's still running Android ice cream. Oh, okay, let me get connected to Wi-Fi here, guys. Speaking of connecting to Wi-Fi, that's one of the things that the Transformer Pad Infinity actually improves dramatically over the Prime. So it's been observed anecdotally that you can get up to several times the data rate using a Transformer Infinity versus a Prime at distance from your wireless access point. And the reason for that is they've made a, a subtle change to the design. So instead of an all aluminum back with their concentric circle, actually quite beautiful looking design, they've added a plastic strip at the top. That plastic strip allows the wireless uh, the wireless devices inside, including your Wi-Fi and your GPS, to communicate more effectively with the outside world. So the issues that plague the Transformer Prime owners are over for Transformer Pad Infinity owners. Do I want to add a Google account? Okay. Uh, let's have a look at the externals, actually, while we're at it. So it's got a completely redesigned camera. Uh, with a flash as well as a microphone in. It's still 8 megapixels though, so nothing's really changed on that front. Micro SD is still there. It's available in a couple of configurations, 32 and 64 gig. And you've got uh, micro HDMI as well as your uh, 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 headphone out jack. Down here you see the docking ports for the keyboard dock as well as the power and data port. On this side you see not a whole lot. And on the top, you've got your volume rocker switch as well as your power button. And that pretty much takes care of it. So feel-wise, still very light, still very thin. 
So they haven't added a ton of thickness like Apple did going from the iPad 2 to the iPad 3. And there's advantages and disadvantages to that. So they're using a more powerful Tegra 3 processor. They're using a higher resolution screen. That means there's more to drive for that 25 watt hour battery. That means you're going to see about a 15 to 20 percent decline in battery life in certain applications such as web browsing or watching videos compared to the existing Transformer Prime. Whether that's a trade-off you're willing to make is up to you. You still will get, you know, about nine to nine and a half hours of battery life out of it. Hence their nine and a half, uh, aha, nine and a half hour battery spec. So whether that's acceptable to you is totally your own decision. Personally, I would go for the more vibrant, higher resolution screen. It's also extremely high contrast versus having the extra maybe hour to an hour and a half of battery life. We're using Corning Gorilla Glass 2, which means that it's incredibly scratch resistant as well as impact resistant. So you're less likely to have it shatter or break. And moving right along, okay. Aha, Sonic Master Audio. So the audio is pretty loud. Let me actually find something to play back for you guys so that we can experience the audio ourselves. How about like uh, everyone's favorite Canadian superstar? No. no. Uh, let's go with this one. No. All right. Uh, yeah, Justin Bieber Vivo. Let's like crank it up. Slick's really excited about this. He loves Justin Bieber. Look how great Bieber looks in HD at 1080p Slick. Slick's all like getting all excited right now. Oh, oh, that's the power button. Oops, I meant to go for the volume button. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I haven't bothered him enough yet. You still have to stay focused over here. There we go. Wow, this is actually kind of a terrible song. I've never heard it before. Oh wow, it got even more terrible. Okay, fine, I'm done with that. So the speaker's on the back. Only one speaker, mono speaker, so if you do cover that up while you're listening to music or watching terrible music videos, then uh, you'll have to uh, sort of enjoy the muffled sound that you get out of it. I would have preferred to see a stereo speaker set up, but it's not the end of the world. And as long as you got it propped up against something where you're not totally muffling it, or you hold it up here, you hold it down here, you hold it sort of like that. <laughs> as long as you're not holding it wrong, then you'll be fine. So I've got Demolition Inc. running and no, I don't want it to post about my progress on Facebook. Are you kidding me? No, I don't want open faint. I especially don't want broken faint. Uh, campaign, here we go. Right. Start. You can see how quick the loading is. I'm just kind of curious now. I also loaded the global demo on here so we can see what kind of performance we get out of that. I'm expecting it to be pretty much, you know, what you'd expect from uh, from a Tegra 3 processor. There we go, let's just kind of pan around a little bit. Oh, so buttery smooth. That's really, really nice. Even when you compare to uh, the, uh, the Jelly Bean tablet, the Nexus 7 that uh, we took a look at a little bit earlier. So there's that, let's load up the global. Loading seems faster as well. I don't know if that's a function of the faster memory or the fact that uh, maybe ASUS has implemented slightly faster uh, flash for the storage. I'm not sure, but both global and if I could get it to go. Okay, yeah. Both global and uh, Demolition Inc. seem to load faster on this tablet than they did on the Nexus 7. So what happens if we hit Mr. Clown over here? I don't know. Okay, not gonna overthink this, but uh, there we go. So that pretty much does it. It's fast. Oh, cancel. No, nope. no need for flash player. Flash player is going away. If you uh, if you're really married to having flash player on your tablet, you might want to stop doing system updates at this point. Speaking of which, postpone. Quit bugging me about this. We'll see how uh, how the web browser feels, because really that's a big. Ooh, that's nice. Rotation. Ooh, we got a bit of a delay going on there. Well, hopefully it gets a Jelly Bean upgrade at some point because Jelly Bean is so buttery smooth. Hence the project butter name. So, thank you for checking out my unboxing and first look at the Transformer Pad Infinity. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos. And if you were curious as to how much thinner the Infinity is compared to the original Transformer, it's about like so. Very significant. Don't forget to subscribe.